Tashidale and welcome back. We are now moving from Kore Rusha and the preliminary practices into the what we might call the actual practices of Dzogchen or the Great Perfection. Um, the first part of that we talked a little bit before about the mind series and the space series and then the special instruction series. This is the special instruction series which is divided into two parts, the Trekcho and Togao. Uh, the the Corde Rushen, of course, is also included as a preliminary practices as a part of that. So Trekcho literally translates as cutting through. And so we're cutting through the thoughts and concepts and so forth that obscure our innate Buddha nature as a part of that, and allowing our own true nature to then radiate through in all its luminosity. One of the root teachings of this is the three statements of Garib Dorje. Garib Dorje was known as the first of the human masters of great perfection. And he summarizes the teachings in three points. The first one is a direct introduction of the view. The second one is developing confidence in the view. And the third one is abiding in the view until fully awakened. So first we get the introduction, secondly then we develop confidence in it, and then the third one we abide in that until we are completely awakened as a part of that process. So the first step, the introduction, the direct introduction, comes from the pointing out instructions from the Lama that uh, we talked a little bit about earlier. And these are things that cannot be done through the written word. They have to be done directly through the actions of the Lama. And you have to get the direct experience. That's the focus, is the direct experience as a part of that. And so descriptions are not considered to be sufficient in themselves. And that's why we need that direct experience. The second one, developing confidence in the view uh, once you've had that direct experience, which doesn't necessarily take a whole lot to accomplish, but once you've accomplished that, you begin this process of developing confidence. And you do that through many short quality meditations, just as we've been doing with other practices throughout all of these paths. So in many ways, it's similar to shamatha. Uh, which we've talked about, and in fact, Padmasambhava refers to these practices as a form of advanced shamatha, or shamatha without signs, and so that's what we will be looking at here in a little bit. And so the, the idea is, much like with shamatha, we're habituating our mind to look at things in a particular way, to see them, to understand them in this particular way. And it's a variation on what we have done before. So it's not like a dramatic difference. It's something that we're familiar with in many ways, but it does have its own nuance. And so as we train the mind, we take these small steps in uh, these new characteristics or qualities. And so the third step then is mastery of the training of the mind in the view, the wisdom aspect. So one remains undisturbed by other thoughts or actions that we engage in as a part of this. And you might say that we just abide in Dharmakaya at all times. Now this doesn't mean that you don't ever have thoughts. Uh, like the goal of shamatha is to, to abide in a state without thoughts at all. But in Dzogchen, or Great Perfection, that's not the case. Uh, instead of that, you may have thoughts at the same time as you're abiding in this Dharmakaya. So it's a both-and approach, if you will. So similarly, you can engage in conversation or even other kinds of actions while maintaining the view. So it's achieving Buddhahood in this lifetime in a very literal way. You're able to be in that state of Buddhahood, if you will, and engage in things that we do to benefit others and so forth as a part of our life. So to develop confidence in the view, uh, Trekcho meditation is often taught in four parts. Uh, the first part is the advanced shamatha that I mentioned, sometimes just called shamatha. 
followed by advanced Vipassana, also sometimes just referred to as Vipassana, but it's different than the Shamatha and the Vipassana that we talked about in the Path of Individual Liberation. And then the third state is just called One Taste. And then the fourth one is called Non-Meditation. So these have been derived from nearly identical teachings on Mahamudra, uh, which uses the same four-step model. So most lamas will say there's no difference between Trekcho and Mahamudra. Uh, some, like the Dalai Lama, will say there's even no difference between Trekcho, Mahamudra, and Madhyamaka, the middle way. So these three are all very, very similar in nature. Uh, the essence of them is all the same. So that's the key point. Uh, but some lamas do teach it in slightly different ways. Uh, but Pavasabhava includes these forms of shamatha and vipassana instructions on the path of great perfection and even though they are somewhat different and so for that reason I use the term advanced shamatha, advanced vipassana to, to differentiate those. And the key difference is that there's no object of support. In shamatha normally we had some kind of an object, either a physical object that we were looking at or perhaps a mental object that we were imagining when we do deity yoga, for example, the deity becomes the object of focus. And so it's just another form of shamatha in that sense. And uh, Vipassana is very similar to that, where the focus is on the nature of mind itself. It's not analyzing self and other phenomena, that type of thing. So the focus is done differently. The one taste is done by simply alternating back and forth between the two until they begin to merge together and become one. And so at that point, you just integrate that into your daily life. Uh, so there's no separation from meditation on the cushion and the things that you do is your life off of the cushion, if you will. They become the same. Uh, rather than saying then uh, a state of no more meditation, it might be better to say everything is meditation at that point. So our practice then we want to look at is this advanced shamatha. And as noted, it's, there's one approach for teaching trekcho uh, that just basically begins with shamatha. And so it's a little different than, as I mentioned, the path of individual liberation and how that's done. It's an advanced form of that because there is no object. And so it's called shamatha without signs. The other that we did before was called shamatha with signs because it had an actual object of meditation. So in this phase, uh, there are no longer any visualizations. We're not visualizing anything at all. Uh, you don't focus on anything other than just being aware. Uh, being aware itself, resting non-conceptually without thoughts. However, uh, if thoughts do come up, they just self-liberate, so you let them go uh, you, without being attached to them in any way. So rather than trying to block them or eliminate them as we might do in basic shamatha, in this case, we just go ahead and let them come and let them go, almost as if they're in the background. We're still focused. The thoughts come, they go, but we don't really pay any attention to them other than to notice that they are coming and going. And we don't cling to them. If you wind up getting attached to a thought, then all of a sudden you realize, oh, I'm thinking about such and so and not meditating. You've lost your focus. And at that point, you simply go back, refocus your attention and on the awareness itself and let that go. So thoughts can come and go, just try not to get attached to them as they come and go, as a part of this. Let them self-liberate, if you will. In uh, his notes on Mahamudra, Pema Karpo states, recognizing thinking within stillness and seizing the natural seat of stillness within the occurrence of thoughts is therefore called intermingling stillness and occurrence. 
and hence is also called the recognition of one-pointedness. So within this stillness, if you will, if we recognize thoughts as coming and going without getting attached to them, then that is this intermingling of stillness and occurrence, if you will, that he refers to. The one taste or one pointedness is the term he used. Another way to think of it is the way that I just mentioned, a foreground and background, where the foreground is your focus and the background is other things that are going on. Um, the goal is to keep the awareness in the foreground, that that's your main point of focus. And then the thoughts that come up or other forms of consciousness that arise continue to arise, but they arise in the background. That's not what we're focused on. And you can do that as you get good practice at this. You can do it and you can continue to talk or work or engage in other kinds of activities while still maintaining your focus on pure awareness. And that's the idea, to get to a point where you can do that. That's the third statement of Garib Dorje, is being able to do that. So, I remember though that awareness does not mean being aware of something. You're just aware itself. You're awake. You're just present in that state. And it's simply that, uh, well, another analogy that I sometimes like to use is the difference between potential and kinetic energy. Uh, kinetic energy is the, the motion, the energy of movement. Potential energy is the stillness, the, what abides in that state without moving. And so the analogy is that potential energy is like awareness. And kinetic energy is like awareness of something. Okay? And so what we're trying to do is attain a state where we, we're aware, but without any movement in that awareness. That's the basic idea, initial idea. And so, <clears throat> uh, so another term that we use for this is rikpa. The rikpa means pure awareness, a literal translation. Pure awareness. Pure because we're not aware of anything except the awareness itself is a part of that. Uh, as in other forms of meditation, we are advised to avoid grasping onto joy, clarity, or even non-conceptuality itself as these things arise. They will arise, different things arise in addition to thoughts and so forth, and we have these different experiences associated with meditation as well that arise. And as long as we don't grasp onto those or try to recreate those experiences, we'll be fine. It's when we try to do that that we get ourselves into trouble. So that becomes a hindrance. Instead, you just let it go, let it be, and then you just evenly remain in awareness um, of your own innate Buddha nature, Tathagata Garbha. So the essence of the Buddha's space-like awareness, or Rigpa. Uh, one of my teachers, His Eminence Garchen Rinpoche, describes it this way. The nature of mind cannot be described. It is like space. Milarepa said, when there is no difference between space and mind, that is the perfected Dharmakaya. The empty space-like essence is the quality of Dharmakaya. There is a vivid, clear awareness that knows its empty space-like essence. The nature of empty, of, excuse me, the nature of clarity is emptiness. The nature of emptiness is clarity. They are not separate. They are not distinct. They are the union of clarity and emptiness. So that gives an idea of what it is that we're trying to focus on in the practice of trekcho, the cutting through part of the Dzogchen practice. And it's, on one hand, very, very simple. And at the same time, very, very difficult. 
It's very subtle, and that's why. It's very easy. The basic idea is extremely easy, but doing it because it's so subtle and it's so easy to get caught or trapped into one of these other experiences, that that's what makes it difficult to do. So those are the main parts. So what I wanted to do then is to then give the actual direct experience of the pointing out instructions, the direct experience of that state. And to do that, we're just going to meditate for a little bit. And then I'm going to make a noise, which then you want to look for a gap, because the noise tends to startle you. And in that startled state, it creates a gap before any other thoughts arise. And so you want to watch for that gap. That gap represents the direct experience. And so that's the key, is to get a hold of and recognize that direct experience. Okay? So just take a breath, deep breath or two, and rest in that state, natural state for a little bit, without thoughts, just regular shamatha kind of a meditation. So hopefully you recognized at least a small gap created with that <coughs> loud noise and it created enough that you can get a feel or a sense of what that is like. It's not anything in particular other than just that emptiness that is existing in that short period of time and ideally that then lasts and goes on out even further. 
Another form of these instructions that I uh, received from Lama Suyadas, I actually like even better. And this one, because it's, it's not such a rough approach, let's say, uh, is the use of a bell. And with the bell, what we're going to do is follow the sound of the bell into emptiness. And it's a more gradual way, and I think in many ways really helps get you into that sense of emptiness, that sense of rikpa, easier than the other approach does. So now we're going to go back into a meditative state for just a little bit, and I'll ring the bell. And then I want you to just follow the sound of that bell into emptiness. So that's a nice, easy way, I think, to get into it. So if you have a bell, uh, that's a nice way to go into this form of a meditation and get that sense of, of rikpa without it being a thing of any kind, any kind of an experience. It's without boundaries. There's no particular uh, qualities to it that can be described or anything else. But that's what we're after, that state. Even if thoughts come, let them go, and we abide in that state as long as we can. But quality is important. We do it with short quality sessions. They don't have to be long. You can divide a session up into several shorter meditations and stay in it while it's good quality, as soon as it starts breaking down, stop for a moment, then go back and do it again. And as it breaks down, stop for a moment and go back again and that kind of thing. And uh, it won't take very long before it becomes habitual. And then you begin to grow those increments of time as they go out and out and become longer and longer as a part of that. So that is that those are, I guess, the pointing out instructions.